In this video, we're going to study the stereochemistry of the additions of elemental halogens to alkenes. And in particular, we're going to look at two contrasting cases. The case of addition of X2 to trans-2-butene, which is this molecule here, and the addition to cis-2-butene, which is this molecule here. So these are diastereomers, and they differ only in the configuration about the carbon-carbon double bond, but they give interesting outcomes in additions of X2 because of their difference in stereochemistry. And we'll explore the differences in detail and understand how to analyze these cases in general in this video. In a halogenation reaction of an alkene, we're adding X2 to the alkene and both bonds are formed in the same reaction. Mechanistically, the first step that happens here is the addition of X2 to the alkene to form a halonium ion in X minus. So let's start by drawing the alkene kind of at an angle so that the molecular plane is at an angle to the screen, almost perpendicular to the screen. And we can imagine X2 approaching this alkene in two directions, either from above, like so, or below, like so. These two directions of approach lead to enantiomeric halonium ions, and we can see this if we draw the curved arrows and follow the stereochemical course of the reaction, and in particular the configurations of these new stereocenters that develop on the alkene carbons. Based on the way we drew these directions of approach, this direction of top approach, which I'll label A, leads to this enantiomeric halonium ion. And this direction of approach from the bottom, which I'll label B, leads to the halonium ion on the right. And it's worth verifying this on your own. Try to visualize the approach of X2 to the alkene and verify that these are the halonium ions that result from these directions of approach. Now, the net result of this reaction is anti-addition because in the step that's going to follow, the halonium ion is opened by the halide anion X minus. That's actually worth reminding ourselves that that has been formed here as well. The halonium ion is opened by X minus in an SN2 step via backside attack. So we're going to get a net anti-addition across the carbons of the alkene. And that's evoked by the product structure here with one X above the plane of the screen and one X behind the plane of the screen when the carbon containing backbone is drawn as it was in the starting trans to butene. And so the net result is anti-addition. Only a single product is drawn here, which may seem odd. We've got a pair of enantiomeric halonium ions that collectively lead to a single product. And this is not a mistake. This reaction only forms a single product. We can use the idea of stereotopic relationships to understand why this happens, and in particular focus our attention on the stereotopic relationship between the carbons that would be attacked by X minus to form the product in each of these halonium ions. Notice that this molecule has a rotational axis of symmetry that is in the plane of the screen and that runs through the X atom and bisects the carbon-carbon bond in the halonium ion. That's a 180 degree axis of symmetry that leaves the, the appearance of the molecule completely unchanged and exchanges the two carbons in green. This means that those carbons are homotopic. In other words, they're chemically identical. And put most bluntly, addition of X minus to either of those carbons is going to lead to the same product. In fact, the molecule that you see right here. And this is again worth verifying on your own that addition of X minus to this carbon leads to this product and addition of X minus to this carbon leads to this product as well. And of course, the same is true of the enantiomeric halonium ion B on the right. The two carbons highlighted in black now are also homotopic. They share a homotopic relationship with one another so that they are chemically identical and the addition of X minus to either of these carbons is going to lead to the same product, namely the molecule that you see up here. So I wanna emphasize it is worth pausing the video right now and verifying that all of these additions to X of X minus to all four carbons lead to this same product right here. And one thing that's worth pointing out that is worth noticing and also again worth verifying is that the product is what we call a meso compound. It's achiral. It has stereocenters, but it is an achiral compound. And that's because in one of its conformations, not the one drawn here, but in one of its conformations, it has a plane of symmetry. And in fact, in this confirmation, it has an inversion center, a center of inversion symmetry, which is enough to conclude that this molecule is achiral. What we can conclude from this analysis is that for trans-2-butene, which is this molecule we started with, all additions that differ in their stereochemical course lead to the meso product. Even though we generate enantiomeric halonium ions in the middle of the mechanism, 
Those are consumed in such a way that they converge to a single product. Now, let's look at the case of cis-2-butene, which is this reactant here. Now, we end up with a mixture of two products. And if we compare these two products on stereochemical terms and try to decide what their stereoisomeric relationship is, I encourage you to pause the video and try this on your own first. But if we do this, we'll come to the conclusion that these are enantiomers. And what we can say in general about these additions of X2 to alkenes is that if a chiral 1,2 dihalide is generated, if the product is chiral, we'll get an enantiomeric mixture and more specifically a racemic mixture of the two enantiomers, a 50-50 mixture of the two enantiomers. And a stereochemical analysis of the mechanism and of the reaction can help us see why. So now the situation is different in an interesting way. If we again draw the alkene such that its plane, the molecular plane, is sort of perpendicular to the screen, we again have apparently two directions of approach of X2 to this molecule, either from above or from below. The difference now is that both of these directions of approach lead to the same halonium ion. And this is worth verifying again on your own by visualizing the process. Addition above and addition below both lead to this single halonium ion. And again, we can use stereotopic relationships to understand why this is. What we want to compare now is this region of space above the alkene to the region of space below the alkene. And when we do that, we come to the conclusion that these two regions of space are homotopic. The reason is the molecule has a rotational axis of symmetry that runs perpendicular to the screen in the plane that we've drawn here, and it bisects the alkene carbon, carbon double bond. And that moves one green area into the other green area and vice versa, while leaving the rest of the molecule completely unchanged in appearance. From that, we can conclude that these two green areas are homotopic. Therefore, addition to the top or bottom face, addition along these either of these green areas is going to lead to the same halonium ion. However, we go from this single halonium ion to a mixture of enantiomeric products. How is this? Well, now let's look at the stereotopic relationship between the halonium carbons in this single halonium ion. So now we're comparing these two carbons to each other and essentially, you know, most simply asking the question, does addition of X minus to either of these carbons lead to the same product? Addition of X to form the halonium ion has destroyed this rotational symmetry that was present in the original alkene. Now we have just a reflection plane of symmetry running right through the middle of the molecule right here. That reflection plane exchanges these two carbons highlighted in red without changing the appearance of the molecule as a whole. And so we lack rotational symmetry, but we have reflection symmetry that exchanges those carbons. The two carbons are enantiotopic. And as we've seen, this means that addition of an atom to one or the other of the carbons is going to lead to a pair of enantiomers. And we can visualize the additions to determine which product corresponds with which sense of addition or which carbon was added to. So without going into the detailed analysis, this is something that I encourage you to do on your own. Let's consider the two enantiotopic carbons A, the right-hand carbon A and the left-hand carbon B. Addition of or substitution of X minus at carbon A leads to this enantiomer with an inversion of configuration at this carbon on the right where addition occurred and retention of configuration at the carbon on the left while addition to carbon B, or substitution at carbon B, I should say, X minus substituting at carbon B, leads to product B. And again, we have an inversion of configuration at carbon B, because that's where addition occurred, and retention of configuration at carbon A in this product. So again, consideration of the stereotopic relationships between either the faces of the alkene involved or the carbons of the halonium ion involved allows us to systematically determine whether we should expect a single molecule out of the reaction or a pair of enantiomers. And because this halonium ion is achiral and X minus is achiral, we're generating chiral products from achiral starting materials. Well, this is why we should expect a racemic mixture, a 50-50 mixture of the two enantiomers since there's no bias, we might say. There's no spatial or stereochemical bias for one enantiomer over the other.